Top 5 Things You Didn't Know About Final Fantasy 7 Number 5. Tifa's entire character was created as a reaction to the demise of Aerith. Final Fantasy 7 went through several different concepts before the creators settled on the one that was finally used. There was originally only three playable characters planned for the game, Aerith Gainsborough, Barrett Wallace, and Cloud Strife. The decision was made for at least one of the characters to meet their unfortunate end during the story. When the decision was made to off Aerith, a new character had to be created to act as another love interest for Clow, which led to the development of Tifa. The entire concept of Tifa was to act as the third member of a love triangle, which means that her entire existence was always tied to Aerith. Tifa was always meant to be a beautiful woman who was similar, yet different from Aerith, with the audience left to decide who was a better fit for Clow, or if they deserved other lovers. Number 4. The Grim Reaper was the motivation to create a remake. Many video game developers will re-release a popular game when newer consoles are developed. This helps them reach a new audience and reconnect with fans of the original. Despite its commercial and critical success, Final Fantasy VII never received an updated version. Other games in the franchise like Final Fantasy VIII and Final Fantasy X have been updated for modern consoles, though, so fans were very excited when an updated version of Final Fantasy VII appeared as a PS3 technical demo shown at the 2005 Electronic Entertainment Expo. Its purpose was to demonstrate the PS3's graphical capabilities. Fans were disappointed by this false hope for a re-release. This demo fueled the start of the campaign for a Final Fantasy VII Remake. Even after this demo generated so much excitement for a remake, Square continued to deny that an updated Final Fantasy VII game was ever going to be made. After a failed attempt at a Final Fantasy VII Remake for the PS2, the designers postponed the project. Remaking this classic was a massive undertaking that would take time from their other projects. Designers would also have to scale down the original content to prevent another multi-disc release like the original game. At the time, they were working on Final Fantasy XIII and its sequels, so their availability was severely limited. Interestingly enough, the one motivator that finally brought about the start of the remake was the Grim Reaper. After concluding Final Fantasy XIII, the design team had plenty of availability to pursue other projects. Final Fantasy producer Shinji Hashimoto was the first to reconsider the remake project. He spoke to the members of the original creative team, co-writer Yoshinori Katase, artist Yusuke Naora, and character designer Tetsuya Nomura, about reconsidering the project. The three were concerned that they were getting too old to delay the project anymore. What if they waited until their talents began to diminish with old age? What if the team died before they could finish and the next generation had to finish their project? With a renewed sense of duty to complete what they had started, the designers finally committed to the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Number 3. Star Wars References <laughs> Star Wars is everywhere. Between the movies, TV shows, video games, and merchandising, you cannot travel far without coming face to face with this popular franchise. Its influence has been linked to many sci-fi TV shows, movies, and video games. The Final Fantasy games also have recurring Star Wars references in most of its games. In Final Fantasy VII, two characters, in particular, connect to this Star Wars franchise, Biggs and Wedge. These two members of Avalanche worked with Cloud and Barrett early on in the story. Not interested. They helped destroy one of the Shinra Mako reactors in Midgar. Sadly, they both lost their lives when Shinra destroyed the city. 
their bravery and sacrifice paralleled their Star Wars counterparts Biggs Darklighter and Wedge Antilles. The Star Wars character of Biggs was Luke's friend from his home planet of Tatooine. The two flew together to take down the Death Star. Sadly, Biggs didn't make it out of the battle alive. Wedge, on the other hand, survived to the end of the original trilogy. He was another starfighter pilot who fought alongside Luke in the battles on Yavin, Hoth, and Endor. Other than Luke, he remained as the only other survivor of all three battles. May the Force be with them all. Number 2. Sephiroth perished at the hands of Cloud and Nibelheim. Sephiroth's body wasn't even functioning before the events of Final Fantasy VII, as Cloud managed to fatally wound the Mad Soldier in Nibelheim. This incident occurred after Sephiroth took care of Tifa with a single slash of his sword. Cloud, angered by this turn of events, took Zack's buster sword and speared Sephiroth through, effectively stopping his motor functions there and then. However, Sephiroth was too tough to let this light hiccup delay his plan of revenge. After all, the man was a genetically superior warrior, which meant that his fortitude was also the stuff of legends. Simply put, he was able to hold his consciousness after passing away through sheer will. Any man would have lost his head after being engulfed in the live stream, yet Sephiroth still managed to keep his twisted end goal in mind even after receiving a fatal wound from Cloud. One might argue that falling into the live stream after being stabbed actually worked in Sephiroth's favor, since he managed to stay alive even after receiving such a mortal wound. Honestly speaking, there was no way that Sephiroth would have been able to survive after his altercation with Cloud. For all intents and purposes, his mortal life had ended, however, this monumental event also signaled the start of his journey to attain immortality. Combining with a Genova cells in the life stream helped the life form mend Sephiroth's body and provide him with a level of physicality that essentially meant that the iconic villain wouldn't pass away by natural causes. The Genova cells he carried with him fused with his flesh and brought the fragments of his body to the northern crater, where he was subsequently reassembled in a cocoon of Mako. Free from the restrictions imposed by the mortal coil, he was able to utilize a whole host of impressive powers. One of these powers included the ability to form multiple images of himself with little to no effort, thus the villain never really needed to be physically present to govern the actions of the party. Sephiroth simply chose not to inconvenience himself and sent clones in his stead to impede Cloud's journey. The only time that the party witnessed his true form was at the very end of the game in the Northern Crater. Number 1. Several salacious scenes were cut from the game. Final Fantasy VII did not shy away from putting its heroes into several risque situations in the game. Players witnessed Cloud disguised as a woman at the Honey Bee and Tifa almost becoming a sex slave for Don Cornell, and Cloud's being very uncomfortable in his infamous bath scene, though we are still not sure what happened in that scene. Interestingly enough, game designers actually planned to have more risque scenes that didn't make it into the game. The Honey Bee Inn came off rather tame considering it was basically a brothel. These scenes are only found in the Japanese version of the game. One scene included a reception area with a wall of pictures of the available women to choose from. Another scene involved having to haggle for a pair of Tifa's underpants. Moreover, to make the Honey Bee Inn more authentic, more scandalous brothel-related activities were going to take place in the rooms. Game designers also planned to have Cloud and Tifa share a night of passion together in a chocobo stable. After doing the deed, they would take a walk of shame, looking guilty and disheveled. Hironobu Sakaguchi in Rocket Town Hironobu Sakaguchi was one of the main driving forces behind Final Fantasy VII and is again known as the creator of the Final Fantasy series. If you want to thank someone for the endless hours of excellent fantasy, thank Mr. Sakaguchi. Not only do fans recognize his greatness, but so do his designers. If you look close, and I mean really close, you can find an homage to Mr. Sakaguchi located on a wall inside one of the houses in Rocket Town. 
described the seemingly an interesting painting hanging on the wall depicting a seemingly an interesting man as indeed confirmed to be the portrait of Hironobu Sakaguchi. So be sure to stop by and say hello to Mr. Sakaguchi next time you find yourself in Rocket Town. I'm sure that he will appreciate the visit. That was all the information we have available on the topic. We hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe for more interesting content. Thank you for choosing Artificial Archives and we hope you have a wonderful day.